Hello. 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 And welcome, welcome back. And uh, thanks for those of you that are participating in the hallway track. There's some good conversation going on there. Um, feel free to hang out there all day long and bring your questions. But right now, we have a presentation by Brian and Brian about CentOS Stream. And I will get out of the way and let them take it from here. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, so my name is Brian Stinson. I work on the community platform engineering team, but uh, most of you probably know me from the uh, the CentOS community doing, uh, I used to work on CI things, um, done a little bit of uh, uh, of things in the distro, but you've, you've probably seen me around in one place or another. And I think if you were at the last uh, session, you know uh, Brian Exelbeard, uh, board member, uh, Red Hat business uh, guy, you know, all around uh, many hat wearer in the CentOS project. So we're here to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you need to know related to CentOS Stream. And um, I think the 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 first thing we kind of want to talk about is some of the um, just set the stage for some of the problems that you know we've we found in the CentOS community, things we found in our relationship to RHEL, you know, things like that. Um, so we'll talk through a, a set of problems. Um, we'll go through a, like a tiny peek into uh, some of the technical bits and the infrastructure components that are involved here. Um, and then we can talk, uh, you know, kind of move into what you can expect, uh, you know, over the coming, well, first of all, what you can expect now, uh, what you can install on your machine right now, uh, but also to, talk a little bit about what you can expect in the coming weeks, months, uh, years, as uh, more and more of the CentOS Stream project comes online and becomes available to you um, as uh, as things go. And so let's jump into those problems a little bit. And I know this is a, this is a common theme. You're going to see this in a couple of uh, other presentations as well. Um, like, I don't know uh, how many of you out there uh, used to run uh, you know, a shop on CentOS Linux or or something like that. But it used to be a, a real a real problem when you would find a bug. You'd open a bug report, and it would take forever to make it through all of the things that need to make it through in order to get a fix. Uh, you know, out and running. And uh, you know that was um, that was partly because of where we sat as a project. That's partly because of how bugs actually flow through the process and and all of that stuff. But there was a definite lag um, between, uh, you know, even if you were able to report a fix, sometimes it was too late in the RHEL development cycle in order to address that, you know, for an upcoming release or, or something like that. And so, you know, there are times when you would wait months and months and months for a, a bug report to get, uh, you know, through all of the proper channels and then released out uh, in a place where you could consume it. And sort of related to that, it's um, it, it's actually hard to make direct changes to RHEL because um, you know for the most part RHEL was developed internal to Red Hat. Uh, the, there's a, a ton of processes um, I figured out uh, that goes into making RHEL uh, happen, and it's hard for someone external to that process to actually. Uh, make changes that can affect what's going on during that process, and you know those are that's sort of related to the the, the first problem that we had, um, but they're a little bit different, and, and uh, because we're we're addressing that in, in slightly separate ways, and we'll see that here in just a minute. So, um, uh, CentOS Linux, uh, you, you can think of that as uh, as sort of the old world of uh, of how we were. Um, uh, interacting with the CentOS project. CentOS Linux is easy to use. It's easy to get on your machines. It's it's also pretty hard to participate in th the making of that operating system itself. Um, and that's okay. Like, you know, it's, a, um, it's really nice to be able to run your systems on there. But really what we want is uh, targeted participation, both in the project. So, you know, things that you can do in the special interest groups or you know, building on top of the operating system, um, but also directed at the operating system itself. And so, uh, again, these, these problems are all kind of overlapping circles a little bit, but, um, but again, there's, uh, there are things that we're doing to address each of these problems separately, and, and that's what makes them uh, sort of highlighted a little bit differently, different facets of, of the same problem. 
Another one here is it was, um, if you think back to uh, CentOS Linux 7 and some other previous releases, um, you know, the uh, all of our logs and and stuff starting with 7 are, have been public, but it's it, it was a little bit um, hard to discover and see what was going on during those builds. And the, again, this is a problem that we addressed with infrastructure. Uh, so let's talk about how we address some of those things and maybe how we're, uh, we're sorting some of those other problems into um, some upcoming uh, uh, work in CentOS Stream 9. So addressing the problems, uh, here in CentOS Stream 8, um, one of the things that we did to address the, uh, you know, the troubles with reporting bugs and stuff is that uh, bug reports go directly to the, uh, the corresponding rel components. So if you look in Bugzilla against Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, you'll see a version in there called CentOS Stream. And that's important because um, that gets in front of uh, the actual maintainer of whatever component you're you're filing a bug against. And, you know, obviously there's um, there's things about infrastructure that end up being routed to, uh, to me and the folks uh, working on stream. But if you have a problem with a package or a, you know, a true bug in a, in a package, uh, it, it's really, really useful um, uh, to basically open that directly against the rel component because the rel maintainer is ultimately the, uh, the person who's going to, uh, to triage that and make sure that it gets out uh, in terms of source code and stuff. Um, so starting with CentOS Stream 8, we're, all, uh, we're now building CentOS Stream publicly using the same set of tooling that Fedora and RHEL use. And this is, again, this is a bit of an evolution um, in the process from previous releases where we would, you know, kind of uh, build things in the build system, publish the logs somewhere, and then, uh, you know, you kind of have to search through uh, an HTTP tree to, uh, to find all of that stuff. So using the same tooling um, that Fedora and RHEL use was a, a really important component of this because uh, those tools are, you know, they've, they've all got their, uh, their downsides and their, their hiccups and uh, their interesting deployment patterns and things like that. But it's familiar to you if you are participating in the Fedora ecosystem, for example, or if you know how, uh, you know, say you're a RHEL maintainer and you know how things work internal to Red Hat, you can translate a lot of uh, how a lot of these concepts work if we're building using the same tooling. And so that was really, um, that was, uh, both of these, these things were a lot of work, uh, but they were really important to uh, addressing some of those problems. Looking over at, at CentOS Stream 9 though, um, you know, you can take everything that we're doing with CentOS Stream 8 because uh, we're just bringing all of that stuff over into uh, into sort of a new era of the operating system. But um, CentOS Stream 9 is where we really get into uh, addressing the issues that CentOS Stream is you know, easy to use. You can get it on your workstation, install it from the mirrors, all of that stuff. But it's also easy to participate. And um, that, in that includes things like uh, being able to uh, spin up SIGs. And I think Bex has a question from us. Yes, uh, I wanted to let you finish your third point. Yeah, um, so uh, CentOS Stream is easy to use and easy to participate, meaning um, you know building on top of the layers, but also contributing directly to uh, in the form of merge requests to the, the packages that make up the, uh, the operating system. And in CentOS Stream 9, CentOS Stream contributions are rel contributions. So you can contribute directly to uh, what's happening in rel in coordination with the, with the maintainers, obviously. So let's hear a question. Um, one of the issues that someone has had with contributing to CentOS Stream so far has been that there has been a lag in getting responses, and that's made it difficult to, to maintain the energy and the momentum around participation. What's being done to address that? Yeah, so the, um, <clears throat> and that's, a, uh, uh, the, that's one thing that's really highlighted in this split between what we're doing in Stream 8 and Stream 9. Um, I'll talk about that here in, in just a minute about closing some of those gaps because, um, you know, for the, for the most part, uh, again, the focus on, uh, for, for Stream 8 was getting content out. Um, and, you know, there's, uh, there's some, uh, some fun little bits about the, how to contribute during the Stream 8 era right now that we're addressing directly 
with uh, with how we want to uh, to deal with nine. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a detour and we'll talk a little bit about uh, just kind of what what's going on in Stream Eight right now. But I'll come back to that uh, that point. Before you do, I, I wanted to yeah. also prime you with one question uh, that seems specific here. Uh, is CBS going away in favor of Koji Inbox? Ah, right. And uh, we'll actually address that too. But the, the short answer is no. Um, CBS continues to stay where it is. Um, that's our, uh, our place where we expect SIGs to uh, continue their work. And uh, we'll come back to that in, in just a minute too. Uh, so, what you should be seeing on your screen here is um, the uh, you know basically an entry in git.sendos.org. Um, this is for the Bash package, and you see out there these are the. Uh, this is kind of a, a really silly example, but um, it's just showing our work that we're publishing to the CADS branch. Uh, and again, how we're how we're making this happen is um, you know similar to how you might have expected pushes to work in the past. So you know we're actually taking source code from the the currently in development rel and pulling it out and and, and building it for uh, for CentOS Stream. And I'll remind uh, everyone here this isn't the the ideal case. Um, uh, we're just kind of explaining some of the, uh, the the magic here. But the way that this works is uh, so a package gets pushed here to get that CentOS.org uh, for Stream Eight, and we have um, you know, two package building machines called Carl and Johnny, uh, and they run it through koji.inbox.sendos.org. And this is our public build system. I'm sure a lot of you have, have gone out here and looked at the logs, um, you know, run through some of the build failures. Um, I can see that, um, you know, I took this, this screenshot last night. It looks like uh, MBS was having some fun issues tagging things. You know, all of this stuff is um, live and running forward through as we uh, as we build things. And you can see, uh, you know, Carl's been busy building a, a whole bunch of packages yesterday. Um, but we know that this is a gap, right? And um, we mentioned that before. It's, you know, it's hard to, um, uh, it, you, can, you can submit patches to CentOS Stream 8, but the process seems a little bit indirect. Um, and again, there's we have that that process where source code flows, you know, call it inside out, where it starts in rel and then comes back out again, and then we build it. Um, this is a little bit uh, it's a little bit better than previous distributions because builds happen slightly after rel, but we have a little bit more um, there, there's there's a little bit more of a coordination path here uh, on order because it's a um, we don't have to guess anymore, uh, like we used to in, in in previous distributions, and you know there's some some tips and tricks that uh, Johnny and Carl do to make this happen. Um, but roughly the the builds come out in you know the same order as they do in RHEL, and you know for the most part, um, maintainers are starting to pay attention to Bugzilla and incoming patches through Bugzilla against the stream components. And uh, you know this is a big um, this is a big shift that is going to take a, a long time to be fully realized. Um, mostly because you know starting with Stream Eight, with the way that source code works, rel maintainers are actually doing their work internally, and then you know we we as a team as a stream team reflect it out in the public. Uh, and so looking over at Stream Nine about how we close some of those gaps. The source code is actually going to flow outside in. Um, and we'll we'll show you how that works here in just a minute. But uh, you know, any merge requests that you um, that you might file, and this is all in GitLab, it directly influences what the rel maintainer is doing because stream is actually how rel development is going to happen. Um, maintainers are working. Uh, rel maintainers are working in the stream branches directly to get their their work done you know, across both of those um, uh, operating systems. And we're closing the gap here. Um, you know, since we have this source code that flows outside in, um, you know, goes public and then makes it into all of the, um, you know, the, the side branches that 
maintainers uh, have to keep in internally for um, for various reasons. But it starts, you know, out in stream. We have a public component that we can build against and schedule builds both for the the CentOS stream package and for the rel package at the same time. And so we're we're moving to a situation where we're more closely coupling. Um, the the packages themselves and this makes the build order problem uh, a whole lot easier and again uh stream is how rel development happens so you know it's not just the code uh not just the bugs which we're you know we're, we're evolving to a little bit uh it's it's also things like tests and 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 things like that uh so just to show this in picture form um and this is uh uh, Alexander's put together uh, a really nice um, diagram here about how this works. And you can see sort of the, you, you can think of this as a tale of two infrastructures, basically. Uh, down there on the on the bottom part, that's, uh, you know, everything in the red. That's that's all the activity that we have to do to, uh, to get a rel release out. Up at the top is where, um, you know, you and I are actually uh, paying attention to, for the most part. This is the CentOS stream infrastructure. And you can see that a, a pull request directly affects the diskit branches in CentOS stream, which then gets synced into uh, you know, all of the rel process. And these things flow you know, more or less in sync. So you know, we get it built, we run it through testing, we make sure that we tag it to the right place so that we can release it, and then it goes out um, in a CentOS stream compose and then the rel build uh, goes out in a rel compose. And to show you a little bit about what that looks like, here is bash uh, in GitLab. And you can see that uh, you know, we're, we're populating the C9S branch here. Um, so this will be CentOS Stream 9 content when this, um, whenever we flip the switch to make these publicly available. But um, I think one of the things that uh, that's going to be interesting here is like this is this is literally the diskit branch for bash and you're going to see these all of these commits that are happening right now those will be reflected um, uh, you know as those things pop up but you'll also be able to uh, to contribute directly here this is where the pull requests happen so we're um, you know you go in into our namespace here you fork the bash project make your changes push it back and the bash maintainer is the one that uh, uh, that actually coordinates with you to make that happen. And here's a lovely empty build system. Um, I don't have much to show for you right now because um, really we're focusing on uh, populating that content in GitLab, uh, like I said. But you know, over the next few weeks, uh, as some of this stuff you know starts to be open to the public, you're you're going to start seeing builds. Um, that happen in, in this space as well. And you know, the, uh, these things are, are, are coming online in, in different frames of the time frame. But um, so you'll see, you know, you'll likely see sources first, and then maybe uh, weeks and months later, you'll see builds and, and all that stuff. Um, so again, some things that CentOS stream doesn't affect. Um, yeah, go ahead, Bex. Uh, let's catch up on a, a few questions that have come in, yeah. which I, I believe may be relevant. As you know, sometimes I pick irrelevant things. Um, why do we have two separate Koji instances instead of one? And it appears to be a reference to Koji inbox and CBS. Uh, yeah, so the um, uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the uh, For the most part, we, wanna, we actually want to separate out the distribution content from anything that layers on top of it. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Like I could give you a really technical answer about how um, we don't we, like we don't want people in the SIGs uh, building a package in VR and then consuming that in the build system, and then we can't build against that in VR later in the distribution. Like, like say we wanted to to release um, libz one point two point three. If someone had actually built that in the community build system before, we'd have to do a whole bunch of, of work to actually coordinate that, that stuff. Now, it's totally OK um, for SIGs to, uh, to you know, kind of own their own content and replace parts of the distro and you know, do things that you need. But we have to, um, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that all of the components of, of the distribution are built together and against the right, um, uh, the right places in the Git tree. 
And so that's why we have two build systems. So it's a, uh, there's a, a, a separation in terms of build, but also a little bit of a separation in terms of, um, of access controls and stuff too. So you'll see the stream nine build system, the empty one that I just showed you. Um, really the, uh, the name of the game here is to have Red Hat maintainers in control of those builds. You know, they're, they're gonna be the ones that merge your code. They're gonna be the ones that submit this build. And then that has um, automatic effects in that rel pipeline. And so we wanna be sure that we kind of separate out those, uh, those access control concerns a little bit. Um, continuing on that theme, uh, has there been any consideration paid to using Koji Ansible for setting this up? Uh, yes, yep, there has indeed. Um, that's going to form, uh, you know, if you've worked with Koji before, there's a lot of uh, setup and inheritance that you have to do in order to uh, get a, um, uh, um, a build out of this. So I think the uh, the main thing is, you know, we want to um, uh, we want to use the tools that are available to us for that. So, okay, uh, has there been any plan to set up an R package workflow akin to what Fedora has with Fed package? I know there's yes. sent package, but uh, it seems to be abandoned. Where? Yeah. So the um, we're actually working on that. Uh, and, and that's going to be mostly targeted at rel maintainers because they're the ones that have to uh, kick off builds and, and and all of that stuff. So um, I think the uh, you know the other thing too is uh, some of those tools need to be updated for some of the SIG workflows as well. Uh, now that we have some of the the other features involved, but um, but that's the that's the plan. Okay. I have a couple more questions here. Yeah. Um, is there going to be a way for SIGs or the community to add CI jobs? You touched on CI jobs to be executed on candidate composers in CentOS Stream. Yeah, so the, we're working with. Um, so I think the main uh, uh, the the main goal here is uh, you know we're starting with um, you saw that rel pipeline down below. A couple of uh, a couple of times here. the The important thing that we want to highlight first is that um, you know there's this rel internal gate that uh, you know a lot of CI jobs are are, are coordinating against, um, and you know these two interactions here are going to work against each other. Um, I think the the actual patterns of how to get your CI jobs hooked into the same system that's a, a you know a thing that we're we're sort of evolving as we go uh, because we're starting with tests that already exist. But the the idea is we want to make as much of those tests um, public as we can. And I think if you're um, if you're paying attention out in Fedora, um, you know either in Rawhide or um, you know some other places right now, you're familiar with the package level testing that's going on. I think compose level testing is another thing that um, is well, we're, we're we're building the pieces in order to get the distribution out and putting hooks into those processes so that we uh, have good places to hook into in the um, in the future. Um, there are three additional things uh, that I think are somewhat relevant that I'll, I'll yeah. interrupt you with if that's okay. The first yeah. one is about downloading packages directly from Koji. Is that going to remain blocked? And specifically, LD, Open LDAP, I believe it was, was brought up as the example and the, the chatter around that. Yeah, so there's, um, uh, we are making some changes related to uh, uh, to the build system and uh, you know some of those access controls and, and stuff like that. I, it's, um, I, I think, um, uh, it's work that we're planning and you know trying to figure out the impact because um, there's a there's a couple of um, uh, th there's a couple of troubles with that and a lot of them are infrastructure related because uh, we're actually serving that infrastructure out of a you know single data center and the reason we don't let folks download packages directly or one of the you know primary reasons is um, we don't necessarily want to serve terabytes and terabytes and terabytes a month. Uh, out of that particular infrastructure. So, 
um, we're looking into that problem and uh, you know hoping to to have a couple of solutions for it. And can you step back to your diagram? Uh, someone says that this diagram seems to imply that changes go into both, but that one of the goals was to allow some stuff to get into CentOS stream that might not make it into RHEL. How will that be handled? Um, I, yeah, so I, I don't think that that's necessarily a goal because anything that makes it into CentOS stream is intended for RHEL. Um, and so, uh, like, I want to be sure that we're not, um, you know, we're not making un uh, things unclear with this diagram. Both of these processes are development processes, and you know, so we're we're always, um, you know, internally. If you look down at the uh, at the bottom part of that that slide there, um, you know, we're always looking forward to a rel release, and you know, things change during that uh, that time frame and stuff. But anything that makes it in via pull request uh, or you know, uh, contributing to CentOS stream disk git is stuff that's intended for rel. Uh, and then I'm going to combine two questions that, that seem to go off in a slightly different direction, but in a real presentation in a room where people were raising their hands, like you'd get thrown that just right now. So you're going to take this softball. Yeah. I know it's a hardball. I don't know. It could be a fastball, slow ball. <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the two questions that I'm going to pull together is that does this workflow apply to the kernel as well, or is that going to be continued to be cherry picked into Scream from somewhere? And are Docker and Kubernetes, and I'd extend this to be other software ecosystems and package sets able to compile packages for CentOS stream. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm actually going to take that last one first. Uh, so, you know, Docker, Kubernetes, um, uh, you know, anything that needs to build against the distribution is always welcome in a SIG. Um, I, I think the, you know, we've got some, um, some interesting conversations to have about what content actually forms RHEL as a thing. Um, the content sets like, or the, the content of RHEL and the content of CentOS stream as distributions are, um, uh, are, are, are likely the same, like they're, they're meant to be the same. And so, you know, anything that's extra that needs to build against the distribution, that definitely is a, a perfect candidate for uh, building it in, in a SIG and you can, um, I've, I've Got some uh, some things about this later, but you have build roots and CBS again. CentOS Stream eight, we expect the same for CentOS Stream nine when that's available. So uh, absolutely, go build those against um, against CentOS Stream and then release it out using the SIG process. Um, There's one more in that, terms of, in that feels very relevant for here, but please yeah. on it. Yeah. So in terms of the kernel, um, I know there's a lot of work going on, uh, you know, related to how the uh, the kernel is being developed and you know what you're going to see related to that. I think the uh, I can say that the process is going to look very different from what we have right now uh, and what you might be seeing in CentOS Stream 8. So um, I, yeah, I don't have any specific announcements or anything, but uh, definitely be paying attention because uh, you know the kernel is an important part of the, the work that we're doing here. Uh, it got asked, currently yum build up dollar package can't be used on stream because SRPMs are not propagated anywhere. Is this going to be addressed? Yes. So I actually have slides about this. Uh, okay. So let's I've, I've got a few bullets. And we'll to... get to them when we get there. Um, I do also feel obligated to point out to you that uh, the audience has determined that there are an infinite number of Kojis as every one of us seems to have one under our desk or on our laptop. Yeah, like, that, that sounds about right. Um, so. Might as well. Um, yeah, so let's see. We were about here. Um, yeah, so the uh, I think we had a question about this earlier, um, you know, about what happens to CBS and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and I know I threw out uh, the, the work that we're doing in GitLab a little bit. Um, so this stuff, uh, uh, you know, all of this stuff that we're talking about with, you know, changing our development processes for CentOS Stream, it doesn't affect... Uh, you know, things that you're doing in the SIGs. And so CBS is still there. Uh, SIG content needs to go in git.centos.org for now. Um, again, you know, I, I think in an ideal world, we would have combined all of this stuff all at once, but uh, there's a lot of moving pieces that we're, we're dealing with uh, here. And we want to be sure that we provide a little bit of continuity for folks trying to get SIG work done uh, while we're still figuring out some of these, uh, these workflow things ourselves. Um, 
so the, those two bullet points are, are important. Uh, if you're in a SIG, keep doing your stuff in CBS the way you have been doing. And if you're uh, interested in uh, putting content in Git, uh, you know, hosted for you, git.centos.org is the, the place for that. And so to answer, um, I think the, the, the other question that we were getting to, um, we've had a lot of feedback in the past few weeks or so um, about changes that uh, that we think need to be made in uh, to make CentOS Stream more consumable, uh, easier to contribute to, you know, things like that. Um, and so this is not a comprehensive list. I know, uh, you know, Bex has uh, has heard a lot of. Um, uh, I'm sure he's he's heard a lot of features that you all have presented to him. I've heard a lot of features that you've presented to to him. And we'll talk a little bit about the process for making that um, those features known to everyone. But uh, here are some things that we've we've gathered so far. Um, we know that we want to make it easy to build uh, kernels and kernel modules in a SIG itself. Uh, you know, a SIG might want to go off and do a mainline kernel, or uh, you know, we want to make sure that the, the folks in who, who do CentOS Plus have you know, the tools that they need to, uh, to kind of control their own destiny a little bit. Um, and also, uh, you know, there are times when you may want to build things like a kernel module. Uh, and you know, there's, a, there's a lot of interesting restrictions around how kernel builds happen in the build system. And if, you, um, if you've dealt with this in the past, you know kind of what I'm talking about, about secure boot and you know, all this stuff that has to be worked out. Um, we've captured that as a, a piece of feedback and a feature that we've uh, pulled into uh, something that we, wanna, we definitely want to address. Uh, allowing DNF rollback to previous versions, um, and again, these are uh, this is all stuff that we've captured. I, I think communicating information about scheduling and you know when you're going to be able to see all of this stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that process in just a minute, but um, yeah, it's important to keep a, a few versions of packages on the mirrors so that you can roll back in case uh, you know you run into in, into some trouble or something. Um, we know that's important. We've captured that. Uh, one of the things that's probably coming first um, is a uh, CentOS stream container image. Um, and again, we're working out some, uh, some logistics around that with, in terms of uh, like policy on the Docker hub and you know, all that fun stuff. Um, but we've actually, uh, you know, we've built this in a, a place or two and we think we're ready to, uh, to actually put this out. We want to handle build root only packages differently, um, and this this kind of dovetails into um, you know the question that was asked earlier about uh, I think it was Open LDAP or you know downloading things from uh, the build system itself. Uh, that's not the that's not the only thing that we want to do to to address this problem, but we've we've got a little bit of work to do, um, and, and this is you know not technical work by any means is policy work and uh, making sure that we have uh, you know, things lined out in the right, uh, the right fashion to deliver this on a regular basis and to make it a sustainable delivery model. Um, but th those details are, are coming related to this. We've captured this as one of our uh, pieces of feedback and source RPMs and debug infos uh, should be first class citizens on delivery. And that's, I think that addresses the, uh, the last question that we have. Um, I think the uh, we want to be flexible about um, you know putting those in the right place, but also uh, you know making sure that uh, you know we keep things like the um, uh, the yum configs up to date so that they point you know if, if we end up shuffling around directory structures and, and stuff like that, um, we want to make sure that that is in a good spot. And so how do we plan to handle all of this stuff? Uh, and so these are just a, a few examples of things that people have asked for. How do we plan to handle this feedback? Um, we're, we've been talking about this, uh, about setting up a sort of a regular roundtable group uh, that's open to the community that's available to discuss changes that we want to make. And you know, I think we should, we should start around things like um, if you want to make major content changes to CentOS Stream, that's something that's you know available to discuss here. If we want new types of infrastructure, um, 
you know, new and weird artifact types. Um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, something interesting would be like, why don't we uh, produce a live image? You know, that that's the sort of thing that we would discuss here and figure out how to um, how to route it to the right place. Because, you know, sometimes to be honest, this group will, you know, will absolutely say no uh, to you know to putting some of our work, uh, you know, as a group into um, uh, into a feature or not. More likely. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the the default case for for a lot of these suggestions are going to be that work probably belongs in a SIG because um, you can do a lot of uh, a lot of cool and interesting things even now uh, in, in a SIG and and make sure that you get the, the content that you need. But other times, you know, the suggestions that that you have might make sense for RHEL two, and this group is responsible for. Um, you know, discussing it, but also getting together with Bex and some other folks to see if this is a, a you know a change that we we should make both for Rel and and CentOS stream. And so that's a uh, that's a really important part of this uh, this process here. And I've only got a few more minutes left, so I want to talk about um, expectations. And so. Uh, you know, I think the we're in a pretty good spot related to um, things like being able to download CentOS Stream, run it on your workstation, all of that stuff. But I think you can expect uh, you, you can expect to see that push that we're making that CentOS Stream bugs are treated like RHEL bugs, and that means you know dealing with um, you know dealing directly with RHEL maintainers against the components that you know whatever. Uh, you have trouble with. You can have you can totally have CentOS Stream eight build roots in CBS. I know a few SIGs have actually taken um, uh, taken advantage of this already. Uh, it's important to keep going with that and uh, trying things against uh, CentOS Stream eight, and then preparing for uh, Stream nine build roots uh, as they go. And again, uh, just a reminder about expectations. CentOS Stream is continuously moving forward. And so uh, you'll continue to see content. There's, you know, again, no releases, no uh, points in time on the mirrors or, or anything like that. We've um, we've got composes.centos.org if you need to uh, to sort of look back in history. But um, but CentOS Stream eight is going to continuously move forward. Uh, and then when CentOS Stream nine comes along the line, it's going to continuously move forward in that uh, in that life cycle as well. Uh, and so just a, a call out to developers. Um, if you're wanting to influence uh, RHEL or CentOS Stream 9 right now, that work is happening in Fedora. Um, and I know there's some um, uh, some branch dates and all of that fun stuff uh, related to Rawhide and Fedora 34 and all that stuff. Pay attention over there, because that's where the work is happening. Uh, and I'm going to pause for a question. Cool. I wanted to let you get through that, but you were calling out to developers, uh, taking questions out of order. Is there a set of expectations or ETA around the move to GitLab? Ah, yeah. So the um, the and uh, I'll, I'll cover this in a couple of other slides. We don't have a um, uh, we don't have a clear cutoff date or a clear go live date for. Uh, that we're publishing here. A lot of this is, has to do with um, workflow changes that we're making internal to Red Hat. Um, and you know, that's, that's basically the deal. Um, I think you saw earlier the, uh, the example that I, uh, that I posted. All of that content is being preceded into that environment, but that's not the live uh, set of content that we're building against for CentOS Stream yet. Um, and so we'll see that here uh, in, in just a couple of slides in, in terms of expectations. Um, uh, do we have other other questions or? You're about to answer it. Gotcha. Uh, so what you can expect, expect on the order of weeks. Again, we're hoping to, uh, and uh, I'm giving general timeframes here because um, you know we need the, the, the flex time in order to make this happen. Uh, and, and coordinate things here, but um, on the order of weeks, you know, a handful of weeks, uh, you know, a dozen weeks, something like that. Uh, we want a public view of CentOS Stream 9 kernel workflows on GitLab. 
Uh, and we're hoping to give you a public view of the Streamline Gis Disket repositories. That was the thing that we, we just talked about there. Um, and again, on the, on the shorter end of this, uh, we're expecting you to see a published CentOS Stream 8 container. And for the months, um, you know, for the months ahead, what you can look forward to is uh, first look at that roundtable um, group for triaging feature requests. Um, we're, you know, uh, we're trying to figure out what that group looks like, how often they meet, when, you know, where do they meet, that all of those sorts of details. Um, and we want to be sure that we schedule it at, at the right uh, the right point there. Um, and uh, you know another thing that's coming forward is the infrastructure SIG. Um, one of the places that uh, is is really good to make uh, you know non code changes is by participating in you know just the SIG discussion, but also giving tips into uh, the the infrastructure SIG. And that that SIG is in charge of you know managing access to the different. Uh, properties that we have, but also, uh, you know, discussing some of the changes that we're making on an infrastructure level. Um, so further on, in, in, you know, in a few months, um, the that's when we're expecting open contribution, uh, those merge requests against the disk git repos in GitLab. And, uh, you know, again, a, a few months down the road, we're looking at open contribution to the kernel workflows. And, you know, uh, Streamline artifacts, CBS build roots, uh, that includes things like composes and, and all of that stuff. You know, we're looking at months down the road, uh, and, and that's uh, on this the schedule that we were uh, we were thinking about here. So, what you can expect here at the dojo, um, uh, head over to uh, the everyone can contribute to Rel now talk. Uh, I think Tomash has um, some. Uh, some extra stuff to add, you know, similar to what we were talking about here today, but um, he'll be answer he'll be available to answer some questions about that too. Again, there's other talks about uh, the SIGs and the the layers, and uh, you know, some folks that are looking into building against set off stream right now. And then uh, we've got some other talks that are, um, you know, talking about building different kinds of artifacts and uh, you know things that aren't necessarily happening right now in SIGs, but uh, I'm sure those are uh, those are interesting talks as well. And Bex and I will definitely be in the hallway track to answer any further questions. And we're also gonna go hang out in, uh, well, I'm gonna go hang out in Tomash's talk to uh, see how that goes. So and that's Thank what I got. All. Awesome. Did, did you wanna take any more questions? We have a, a couple more minutes. Yeah, if we've got some. I've got one in the queue. Uh, oh, OK, go ahead. Can you clarify how to handle release RPMs from SIGs to support both CentOS Linux 8 through the end of this year and CentOS Stream 8? Ah, yeah, so the um, the, the way that I understand the question um, is, uh, so every SIG has a, um, a CentOS release package that um, uh, that they release and then you know you install it against uh, uh, in order to enable the repos and stuff. I think the uh, what I'm hearing out of that is we'd like a, a set of guidelines for dealing with those packages, and I think that's something that we can come up with. Uh, I, I have some um, uh, some pretty technical suggestions, like you know making sure that if you're building or if you want to release separate content for you know Linux and Stream. Uh, make sure that you use the right yum variables. Uh, we provide yum variables that define each of those uh, uh, those different um, operating systems, and so you can tell the difference a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna take that as an action that we need to uh, maybe do some uh, some targeted documentation at that. That was all of the questions that I believe were asked in chat. Any that were missed were unintentional. No one has called me out for missing any, so I turn it over to Mr. Bowen. All right. Thank you so much, Brian and Brian. We now have a short break between sessions. I encourage you to hang out in the hallway track 
or continue to ask your questions here or in any of the other event chats. We're in all those places. We can answer your questions. For those of you who missed the board of directors session earlier today, that is currently uploading to YouTube. So if you go to YouTube slash the Centos project, that will be there within really probably about five or 10 minutes. It's currently processing. And uh, our next session has some overlap with this session, but uh, we'll, we'll take a different approach on it. It's specifically about how to land your patches in RHEL and how that process works. And uh, we'll be coming back for that in 15 minutes. Thank you all so much for attending and we'll see you back in just a bit. Thanks all.